What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my second year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the 11 courses that I took this year, one of these courses was Math 253. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience from taking Math 253 during the 2023 slash 2024 school year in the winter term, not the summer term. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. Alright, so what is Math 253 all about? In this course, you'll be learning all about multivariable calculus, extending on the concepts that you learned in Math 100, Math 101, and Math 152. In other words, pretty much all the math that you learned in first year will be extended into three dimensions or multiple variables in Math 253. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how Math 253 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. Each week, you will have three hours of lectures to attend that are hosted on a Zoom webinar session. Using a really cool transparent screen to write things on during these lectures, the professor will discuss the course concepts with a mixture of theory, discussion, and some examples. Questions can be asked in a specific chat box and can either be answered by the professor or a TA. These lectures are recorded and able to be watched at any time and attendance is not mandatory for these lectures. In Math 253, you will also have weekly web work assignments to help you practice the concepts that you've been taught in the lectures. These assignments usually consist of around 10 to 20 problems, and for me, they usually took around 1 to 4 hours to complete each week. On web work, you will also have a couple quizzes to complete that are randomly assigned throughout the term. We only had two quizzes in our year, and they're basically just a couple questions taken straight from the web work assignments, but with a 30 minute time limit. Lastly, in terms of course structure, there will be a few comparative judgment assignments completed using Compare. If you took AppSci 100 or 101, you will definitely remember what it was like using Compare. We had three of these comparative judgment assignments, and they're basically just written responses to some conceptual questions. Once they've been submitted, you will then compare around eight pairs of answers to see which one's better and give feedback on these answers. Grading is based on participation only, so as long as you don't forget to do it, you'll get the mark for it. In terms of required materials for this course, you don't really need anything other than a laptop for the Zoom lectures and something to write things down on, which we'll get into in a bit when we talk about the midterm exams and how they work. No calculators are allowed for this course, and there's nothing really notable that you really need to purchase. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in Math 253. The course content itself can be divided into the following three sections, 3D geometry, multivariable differentiation, and integration. In the first part of the course, you'll be reviewing a bunch of concepts from Math 152 or an equivalent linear algebra course, including things like vectors, dot and cross products, lines and planes, and some surfaces. In the second part of the course, this is where we really start to get into the meat and potatoes of multivariable calculus, as you'll be learning about partial derivatives, tangent planes, directional derivatives, gradient vectors, and Lagrange multipliers, which are all somewhat related to differentiation. And in the last part of the course, there is a heavy focus on integration through the use of double and triple integrals. Yes, there are things such as double and triple integrals. You'll learn how to integrate in different coordinate systems like cylindrical and spherical coordinates, and also how to apply them in different geometries and shapes. And that's pretty much everything that you're going to learn in Math 253. In terms of the grading scheme for Math 253, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Starting with your web work assignments, these are weighted at 10% of your overall grade. Your web work quizzes are worth 5% and your compare assignments are worth another 5%. At the end of the term, your lowest two web work assignment scores will be dropped. In terms of exams, you will have two midterm exams weighted at 30% in total and a final exam worth 50%. 
for the midterms, you will not be writing them in person, but instead you'll be using Crowdmark to view your questions and submit PDFs of your answers. During these midterms, you will be in a Zoom call and your camera will need to be enabled when you're writing. Our midterms consisted of three easy to moderately difficult questions where you would write out your answers and then submit it onto Crowdmark via a PDF or a scanned PDF of your paper. Midterms are done during your lecture time and we had 35 minutes to write and 15 minutes to upload to Crowdmark. The final exam is held in person and consists of seven to eight questions of moderate to slightly challenging difficulty. For our final exam, we were allowed to bring one double-sided letter-sized handwritten formula sheet and there were no restrictions on what we could put on our formula sheet. For context, this is what my formula sheet looked like, but I completely forgot to put the formula for the Euclidean distance between two points on my formula sheet and that really screwed me for one of the questions on the final, so don't make no mistake. All right, now on to some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into Math 253. Overall, I really don't have much to say about this course as it really wasn't a hard course for me or for many of my friends either. The concepts in general aren't too difficult to understand if you had a decent foundation in Math 100, 101, and 152, and it's not really difficult to get a somewhat decent mark in this course. Our professor this year was Professor Mark McLean, and overall, he was a pretty good prof, and I was able to understand the concepts that he taught quite easily. Despite having aphantasia, which is a condition where you can't create mental pictures in your mind, he is still able to appeal to visual learners with decent enough visuals. He was also just really nice to us for a lot of the elements in the course by doing things such as giving us the exact type of questions that would be on the second midterm and the final exam in advance and allowing us to bring a formula sheet for the final exam. I really hope that he teaches Math 253 again in the future so that you guys can get a really good professor. In terms of studying for the exams, your best friend will be doing a lot of practice questions and there are certainly a lot of them out there. I'll leave a link in the description below to a couple of resources. First, a website that has a few past final exams for Math 253. They are somewhat old, but the questions are still relevant to the course. And second, a link to the CLP3 textbook, which is just another resource to use if you're struggling to learn the concepts during the lectures. And I believe there are some extra practice problems in the CLP3 textbook if you'd like the extra practice. And for those of you who are curious, I scored an 81% in Math 253, and the class average was 72%, which is pretty respectable for a class with over 700 engineering students in it. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before going into Math 253. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so that you don't have to suffer as much as I did in second year. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I'll let you know that the next course that I'll be covering is Math 256. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. That being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. These lectures are recorded and are able to be watched at any time, and attendance is not mandatory for these courses. I was so close.